Hey, welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about function arguments. But first, let us learn the difference between an argument and a parameter. Mostly, they are used interchangeably, but they're not the same. So, a parameter is a placeholder that is put in a function. It acts like a variable, in that, like, but it's a placeholder of an argument. Like here in this function, here a function called grid, which prints hello world. But you can put here a, a parameter called name. And like we did in the other video, you can just use f string here and replace this one with the actual and replace it with the variable name like that. Okay. Then inside this, when you call the function, you can use a value like done. So this will print hello done. So this name here is a placeholder. It's called a parameter. This done is the actual value. It's called the argument. So this argument is copied to the parameter here. And this will, is what will be used here. So this is almost like a variable which stores this argument here. So if I run this code, you'll just say hello done. You can see there it says hello done. And also you can just call the same function multiple times and use different names. I can just say here Mary. And here maybe I can say some, I can say Phil. And if I run this code, you'll just say hello Dan, hello Mary, hello Phil. Okay, just to summarize, a parameter is a placeholder and argument is the actual values. For example, if we call this grid function without a value, let's say just call it like that. The function ex expects a parameter, but we call the function without the argument. So if you run this code, there will be an error. Let's see the error message. So the error will be one missing required argument name. So this function requires an argument that you did not provide. And maybe let's say you're building an application where when a user signs up, the, maybe the name is optional. So if someone provides the name, you want the name to be displayed in the application. And if someone does not provide the name, you want it to display something like user. And that is where the default parameters comes in. So a default parameter is used to provide default values for parameters if an argument is not provided for the default values. For example, in this case, you can say name is equals to, then you provide a default name. Let's say something like user. So in case this function is called without the name value, the value of name will automatically be user. So now if I run this code, it will not bring an error, but it will run fine. You can see it will just say hello user. And if I call the same function, let me just duplicate this line. If I call the same function with the value, let's say done and run it, it will, it will display hello done. So if you pass, if you don't pass anything, it will display hello user. And if it doesn't pass, if it if you pass a value, it will display hello done so you can see now our function is flexible you can either call it with nothing or you call it with a with an argument you can just put your name there also you can have multiple parameters it's not a must that you that a function has one parameter a function can have more than one parameter like in this case i can just add other parameters and to have more than one parameters in a function you separate the parameters using a comma so you can put a comma and we have been using strings for a while. Let us just switch to another data type. Let's say, let me use Boolean. I'll say something like is subscribed. Then let me give the default one to be true. So I have, I have put another, another parameter here called is subscribed and give it the value of true by default. Then I can just modify our function. I can just put an if statement here. I can say if, if someone is subscribed, and to change the print and the print statement to be print. And let's, let me also use the F string here. I'll say hello, then the name of that person. Then I can say you have subscribed. So now our function has two parameters. There's this one for name and this one for is subscribed. The default value for name is true and the default value for is subscribed. Uh, the default name, the default value for name is user and the default value for is subscribed is true. So now if I run this code, it will just say 
hello then my name then it says you have subscribed so if i don't put if i don't put let me do, okay i can just call them all of them at once so if i call this one for grit you'll say hello user you have subscribed if i call this one for grit dan you'll say hello dan you have subscribed so you can just run that code to prove that so it will it will say for the first one it will say hello user you have subscribed then hello user again then hello dan you have subscribed then hello dan again because this one also is a it's a catch all okay so what if someone has not yet subscribed so i can just put let me just remove this one let me go with just the second one i can just put a comma here let's say i want to call this function but i want to set the value if is subscribed to be false you can just put a comma there and say false like that so here the value for name will be done and the value for is subscribed will be false because you have seen for the default parameters if you provide the value of that parameter this default one will be overridden so now if i run this code it will just say hello done because now this is subscribed will be false so if i run this code it will just say hello done okay and what if we wanted to use the default name here user but you want to change the value of in is subscribed to be false let us see what that will happen so well you can just remove this name because you have seen that if you don't provide the name it will use the default name that is user but you want to change the value of is subscribed to be false so if i save this code and run it you'll see that we'll get hello false you have subscribed so here this false is read as the name but that's not the case we wanted the value of false to be for is subscribed and added the value of name to be the default one that is user but you see our code interpreted it wrongly and that's not what we want and there is where the keyword arguments comes in so keyword arguments are passed to a function by explicitly naming each parameter and assigning it to a value so here instead of saying false we have to assign the parameter that we are giving it the value so here for it to work well we will say is subscribe then say is equals to false because we have seen that if you don't do this this false will be for the name for the first parameter but if you want it to be for the other parameters you use the keyword arguments that is you keep the you write the name of the parameter then you give it a, a value like just the way you did it here in the parameters but here now it's the arguments and that one is called the keyword arguments and now if you run this code we will see it will just tell us hello user you have subscribed you can say say hello user you have subscribed and it will just say hello user not you have subscribed hello user because this value of is subscribed is now false so this line won't be won't be run the line that will be run is this one for hello and the name user so you can see now our is subscribed has the value false and our name still has the value user and that is how you use the keyword arguments the next type of arguments are the positional arguments and the positional arguments are the most common type of arguments where arguments are passed to a function in a specific order for example back to where what we had before we had the value done this is what we had before we had the value done and false so this done is the value for name and this false is the value for is subscribed because this done is the first argument so it will take the first position here and this false is the second argument so it will take the second position there and that is how the positional arguments works and if you swap the order of these arguments for example if i put false here and i put done next as you have seen in the previous example this false will be for the name and this done if it will be for the is subscribed so if you swap these values they'll you are, you are your code will understand it differently so if you want to swap the values and still maintain the meaning you have to use the keyword arguments that we learned so if i wanted to swap these variables i'll have to use the keyword arguments for example i'll say this one is for is subscribed like that the one that we learned is subscribed like that then i put is equal then i can say this one is for is not is the transition is for name like that so yeah say if i wanted to swap the order i'll have to use the keyword arguments so that the code can know that this first value is for is subscribed and this second value is for name otherwise 
By default, it will use the positional arguments, and positional arguments is so that the first value is for the first parameter, and the second value is for the second parameter. But now if I use this keyword arguments and run this code, you can see my code will work as expected. You just say, hello, done. You just say hello, done, because the value of subscribe will be false. And that is how you use the positional arguments. Also, before I forget, you can use both the positional arguments and the keyword arguments together. For example, I can use this. You have seen this done is a positional argument. I can put it here, done. Then I say, is subscribed is false. So you can see here I've used both the positional arguments and the keyword arguments together. And if I run this code, my code will just work fine because this name, this done will be for name because by position, this first argument should be for the first position and the value of is subscribed will be false. And here I've used the keyword arguments. But if you try to use the, the two combined, but you start with the keyword arguments, it will be an, an error. Because in Python, they want you to start with the positional arguments before you go to the keyword argument. So if I, if I start with the keyword, then the positional, it will prompt an, an error. And the error will be that you cannot use keyword. You can see it says that positional argument cannot appear after keyword arguments. You can see this, if I hover this down, you can see it says that Positional argument cannot appear after keyword argument, and that is not allowed. So you're supposed to use the positional arguments first before the keyword arguments. So that is it with the positional arguments and the keyword arguments. So the next thing is this called variable length arguments. As you can see in this example, this function takes two parameters. So for me to call it, I can only call it with only two parameters. If I add another parameter here, if I just set anything here, for example, I say any extra parameter and I save, you can see it's an error because our function expects only two arguments and I passed three. So that's an error. So to make our function even flexible, we can create functions that can get more than, can get indefinite number of arguments and reduce the args keyword to do exactly that. For example, I can define a function, let's say print nums which the work of this function is just to print numbers. So I can just say print numbers. But and the, what this function does, and it to, to print any amount of numbers that are passed to that function. So for me to do that, I need to pass this args. The thing is just put as an asterisk, that is a star, then write args. Then I can just pass here to print, I can just pass args. Now if I call this function, this is the benefit of this args. If I call this function, it's called print numbers. Print numbers like that. And if I call it with two arguments, that is three and five. If I save and run this code, it will print the numbers three and five. As you can see, the code will print three and five. If I add some extra arguments like seven, eight, nine, zero, two, and save and run this code, it will print all the arguments that I passed. So now this function is flexible, it can do, it can accept any number of arguments, unlike the previous one that had a strict number. If you have two parameters, can only take two arguments. And this function is useful, for example, there's this, like this example here. For example, I wanted to get the sum of numbers, I can just copy this code and just paste it here. So this is a function that utilizes the, the sum the inbuilt sum function. You'll learn about the inbuilt functions later. But this is just an, an example. There's this Python by default has this sum function. The work of this sum function is, is to get the sum of numbers. So this function is called add all is now flexible because it can add any number of arguments that are passed. For example, here I passed one, two, and three. If I run this code, it will return six. You can see in the terminal it will say six. And six is the sum of one, two, and three. And if I add some extra numbers, like let's say I add like eight, nine, and I save this code, then run it again, it will just add those numbers and give me the, the results. So you can see my function is very flexible and can take any number of arguments passed to it. Also, there's this one called quags, but you put two asterisks before it. This one is used, but for you, if you call the argument, you have to use the keyword arguments, as we saw before. And an example is this one. So let me just copy this example and paste it here. So this just does the same thing 
if you call this function, you can just pass any number of arguments, but as long as they are keyword arguments, because you said up here, quags, to mean keyword arguments. And if I run this code, it will just loop the number of arguments that are there and just print them. And that is how the arbitrary position arguments and the arbitrary keyword arguments work. So that is it for this video, guys. I know it was long, but it was worth it. So see you in the next video. Peace out.